Hey folks, it's Craig with the Coastal Stoic here again in the central east coast of Florida on a beautiful sunny super hot day like it's hot everywhere it seems and um, this week I want to bring up something that comes up in my classroom every year and then it's attached to a story an example that I give the students and First of all, I should say thank you very much for tuning in, for watching, much appreciated. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm enjoying them. But it seems that every year, students come to my classroom and have this false sense that they need to be perfect every moment of every time and whatever they turn in. Now, to be sure, not all students are like that. but. It seems to be something that they struggle with getting work turned in or doing it as well as they want to because they feel it has to be perfect. Now, they might have a month to complete the project or an hour to complete the project or 10 minutes to complete something, but they still feel they need to have the same level of perfection, of quality with each of these events. So I teach AP language, um, I teach some high level, really wonderful students, and I, I teach the whole spectrum. But we have come to a place in our world of education to where standardized tests are a thing. I don't think they're going anywhere. But these are timed, like unrealistic type of spaces. So let's take the AP exam, for example. And they have three hours to complete, or they have two hours to complete three essays, two hours and 15 minutes. And they're expected to be good. All right, I want them to be good. But the students look at this time frame, this 40 minutes to do something, as the same as if I assign a major paper in my class where we've read a book or a series of articles or columns or readings, and they're having to do an analytical discussion on something over a month or six weeks of time. And they want to do the same thing in the 40 minutes that they have. And I think that this permeates through our society and that people oftentimes don't take into consideration the fact that sometimes you don't have the time to do the perfect job. Sometimes you do and you can take it on and you can deal with it that way. But oftentimes that's not the, or sometimes that's not the case, I should say. So. Being fair to ourselves, understanding our circumstance, understanding the context of what we're doing and when we're doing something, really plays an important role. And the example that I use with this is spaghetti. Now, I'm saying spaghetti as me, grow up in Orlando, non-Italian, knucklehead would say spaghetti. What I mean is pasta and marinara or meat sauce, red sauce specifically. And the reason or the way this comes about is simple. I love pasta and meat sauce. Love it. If you're a vegetarian, don't put the meat in. I'm down with that. But I love pasta and meat sauce and typically the pasta of choice is spaghetti but we've done ravioli we've done all kinds of other things however the important part is I love it but I don't have the time given my job the dogs my kids my grandkids my friends my other hobbies I don't have the time to do it really well, but I do have a little bit of time, so I compromise, and that's what this week is about. It's about this compromise and being fair and being safe and being fair to yourself and also understanding the parameters with which you're working in to do the best job you can with what you have available with for you um, in your space. So whether that is um, time, uh, money, uh, 
a skill set, whatever that is, understand your parameters. And with that, do the best job you can. So spaghetti is my example. Now, I we're going to go into me making spaghetti here in just a moment or making the sauce for the spaghetti in a moment and the spaghetti to be sure. But uh, I screwed up. I thought I had the camera rolling for the whole thing. I don't. But the premise is this. We have a friend and for a year or for a couple of years we would go to their home during the holidays. And this friend of ours had a mother whose mother who was legit Italian. And so that's kind of where this is going to begin. My, we're going to transition here in just a minute to me midway through making the sauce. The peppers and onions and everything are simmering on the stove and you're going to go right into me cutting up the sausage to put into the sauce. However, we're going to jump into that and I'm going to talk to you about the different levels of engagement with the parameters provided time mostly in this situation to produce the best results so join me in my kitchen with my dogs frankie and lola and as we prepare a craig style version of a an italian favorite come on join me let's have some fun so as you've joined me here Partially through preparing the meal, I'm now cutting up the mild Italian sausage. I prefer the spicy, but my wife is a mild Italian sausage person. So I'm getting this prepared. Um, I am no chef, clearly, but uh, I do enjoy. I did mess up in that I mentioned earlier. I thought I had the camera rolling through the entirety of this, and I was not going to do that intro part. I was going to do that through this voiceover and the cooking, but... I did not. So here we are with the sausage going in to the simmering onions and whatnot. So let's get to it. What's the lesson? What's the talk? What's, the, what's this about? As I'd mentioned in the beginning of this, uh, in the introduction part, we have a friend whose mother was legit Italian, like straight out of Italy, Italian, immigrates from Italy, moves over here, raises her family here, creates then raises a family here grandchildren now too and I don't know I don't think any grandchildren uh, maybe great grandchildren she has since passed away the grandmother the woman who had immigrated from Italy however in the holidays and other times I'm sure but for us at least this woman who was retired when we met her would start the process of her marinara sauce her red sauce just days before it was going to be used she would take tomatoes and stew them down in this massive pot in her kitchen she would oftentimes in her uh, garden she's growing the vegetables many of the vegetables fresh produce she's cooking and simmering and cooking and simmering and this is literally on the stove for a day or two as she's getting this together. She is from scratch making her marinara sauce, her red sauce. Uh, there's meat in this. She had meatballs that she would put in into this. She would uh, make all, it also had sausage in it. It was just amazing. And she would have so much time that she put into this, so much love, so much skill, because she knew how to do this, that she had learned, I'm assuming, from her family, passed down to the next generation. But interestingly enough, as we move from generation to generation, especially, or maybe I don't know, especially, but in the society or culture we're in now, we don't seem to have, or put the time in that we have. Now, I do know her granddaughter is a fabulous cook, and I see her um, on social media making some amazing meals, so clearly something is rubbed off. But this woman would make this red sauce, and then the people would come over a couple of days 
after it. There'd be a loaf of bread sitting next to the pot, a massive pot of this red sauce. And you could literally go break off a piece of bread or cut off a piece of bread, dip it in the sauce, cup your hand underneath so you're not dripping all over the place and walk. And no double dipping for sure, but taste the sauce as she's... As, as, as you're prepping for the meal or getting ready for the meal. It was amazing. Probably the best spaghetti or the so red sauce that I would have, have, have ever, ever eaten. And I've been to Italy. And there was delicious stuff there. But this was stupendous. Needless to say, though, as a man... And a family, my kids and my wife and myself, we all love this meal. Typically over spaghetti, uh, pasta, we make red sauce, meat sauce. But I don't have the skill set. And I don't have the time. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the desire necessarily to spend days making this thing happen. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to have this meal. It just means I need to compromise. So if you look at the video here in the top left corner, there are the two types of sauces that I'm using this particular week. We usually get like the Publix organic or something, but I got another sauce this, this time around called Yo Mama. Um, we're, we, I'll say, I would say we're gonna see how it is, but we did have it and it was pretty fantastic as well. Now, you could use just that sauce, put it on cooked spaghetti or fettuccine or whatever you have, and eat it. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's just a little too bland for me. So I need to spice it up a little bit. I need to change it a bit. I do have the half hour it takes to cut up the onions and the mushrooms and the peppers and the, get the garlic ready and saute the vegetables and then cut up the sausage. Sometimes we put ground meat in there as well. I'm just doing sausage in this one. Uh, I do have the time to do that and then add the sauce here in a little bit. So this meal that I cook takes total of about 30, maybe 40 minutes. Yeah, there's the Yo Mama's uh, roasted garlic version of their sauce. Uh, reading about it there. Um, it's pretty good stuff. And uh, very similar with regards to the nutrition stuff. We're very conscious of, we try to get the stuff where there's no sugar added and whatnot. So we try to get high quality or decent sauce. But reading, the, the, reading that, getting ready to put these into what I've mixed up. Now, after I have the sausage and the peppers and the vegetables and everything sauteed out and I drain the oil, I'm ready to put the sauce in. And that's the process that I'm willing to compromise. That's the part of this that I'm willing to cut corners on. Because somebody out there, Yo Mama or Publix or whomever it is, is ready and willing to make the sauce for me. I'll get the guts of it here, the sausage and whatnot ready. Clean up here a little bit. Um, I'll get that going and then put the sauce on, have the pasta cooked, and then have a great meal. But I don't have the time to do the other. Very similar to my students. Very similar to people in general. We oftentimes feel that we need to do the Italian immigrated, wonderful, amazing cook, and we need to be able to do the same level of red sauce that she does, but we only have a truncated amount of time. And one of the things that I'm find or I've found or I've, I've understood or I've come to understand is that we have a finite amount of time on this earth. I get it. And this friend of ours, her mother, she 
loved making the sauce. That was part of who she was. That was her DNA, her like, her like identity. She loved that. You go, girl. No problem at all. That's not my identity. I love the the result, but that's not my identity. My identity is to have as good of a meal as I possibly can in the time that I have. I would rather be out throwing my cast net, getting ready to go fishing for the next day, or having fished, or exercising, going for a ruck, doing something, going for a paddle, doing something like that in the time that I have, and then only take a half hour or 45 minutes to prepare, prepare or prep the meal. That's what I want to do. That's how I would choose to spend my time. If I loved the cooking that much, I might choose it a different route. Now, if I didn't have this, or I didn't have this desire, what can I do? I have other options too. I could, like I said, just use the sauce itself and not worry about the other things. There's a bunch of stuff in the sauce. It's delicious. But I could choose to do that. Or I could choose to pop up my phone and go to Uber Eats and have some Italian restaurant that I like around here to have that that pasta and red sauce delivered to my house and I don't have to mess with it at all. I can do whatever I want to do during that time. That's my point though. It is our choice. We get to choose how we spend our time. It, now I have to work and we have to do certain things. I'm down with that. But in doing that, and the time that I have for myself and the people around me, I would much rather hang out on the dock in our hammock chairs with my wife with a nice spot of rum looking at the sunset rather than stewing tomatoes and prepping the meal that way. My students, they, and it takes them a while to get acclimated and to understand that they don't need to be perfect. They need to do the best job they can in the time that they have to do the work. If it's 40 minutes for an essay, they need to do the best job they can in that 40 minutes. If it's a month for a project, they need to allot the time that they need to provide or they need to, they need to use to do that well. And so it is with all of us. So it is with all of us. And if there are things that are not productive, if I did not like this meal at all, I wouldn't do it, of course. So the point I want to make is that we, as people, need to allot and be kind and fair to ourselves with the time that we have, with what we want to accomplish in that time. Another example, these videos. I'm clearly not an entertain. I, I don't, I'm not a movie star, I'm not, I'm not a, an actor, I'm just me. My videos are clearly by someone who is not an editor, is not a movie maker but they're real and they're genuine. And here goes the sauce. And voila, we have red sauce. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this talk. I hope you enjoyed uh, what I have to say. Uh, I hope that you can implement and allot the time you need to do the best you can, but be willing to compromise and not be upset at having to compromise from time to time because of the parameters that life provides us. That is to be, and to be larger than spaghetti, we only have around 4,000 weeks given to us at birth for us to live. Think about it, 4,000 weeks. So if that's the case, utilize your time in the best way possible to get the most out of those 4,000 weeks, right? 
Another way to look at it is what life expectancy, 78 years old. You have 78 summers, 78 winters to enjoy yourself. So enjoy yourself. Use your time well. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. And I will be getting to the enjoyment of this meal momentarily. See, doesn't that look so good? Well, to me it does. It's going to simmer for a bit. There we go. And pasta is done. Bowls are out. And it's time to enjoy. Um, please, if you have comments, if you have something to add, something to suggest, um, something to uh, critique, I'm fine with that too. Don't be unkind. Uh, I try not to be unkind in my world. Try not to be unkind in your responses here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to sit down and enjoy our pasta. There's my wife, my beautiful bride. Um, the puppies had to eat too. Yes, healthy portions. Oh my gosh, it's so good. All right, folks. So that's about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you very much for any comments or any likes. And uh, I am thoroughly enjoying doing these videos. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you next week. Bye now.